You read the title right. My parents treated me like a hallucination. A hallucination of my younger sister, to be precise. In fact, they never acknowledged me at all. You see, they didn't believe in indulging my sister in her hallucinations. They thought it was a sign of demons and should be cast out. Anytime my sister acknowledged me, my parents would yell at her and she'd yell right back. Then they would go and pray, pray to God, asking him to get rid of me, like I was some kind of pest. As we both grew older, my sister acknowledged me less and less. I can't blame her though. All the gaslighting from our parents and the priests they took her to, so they could help her in her battle with demons, must have been terrible for her. I got out when I was 17. I stole some money from my parents and walked right out the door. I guess you could say I moved out. Though I never felt like the place I grew up in was my home. Please don't worry about me. I'm fine now. I think. I've gone to therapy. I found supported people to help me through the whole thing. And overall, my life is better now. But I'm not posting here to tell you about my childhood. I'm posting here to tell you about something much worse. Yesterday, as I was getting groceries, I saw my mother walk down the street. She looked casual, normal, almost as if she hadn't refused to give her daughters a normal childhood. I try to keep my eyes off of her, but I couldn't. This was the woman that had ruined my childhood. I didn't know what I was meant to do. Ignore her, flip her off, scream at her, punch her. She saw me. Demon. She ran up to me and shoved me away from her. I stumbled back and fell down. Demon. Demon. Go away. Out. Stop tormenting me. Stop. I didn't know what to say. I just quietly listened to her rambling and watched people try to get her away from me. At some point, I think I just shut everything out. Ma'am, the voice brought me back to reality. My mother had left. It was quiet. There was no more screaming. Ma'am, are you okay? I got up, my knees trembling. I realized that I was drenched in cold sweat. My throat was dry. I had been crying, and I was about to start again. N no. Before the person had a chance to answer, I ran. One of my bags had ripped open, but I didn't care. I let my grocery spill all over the sidewalk. I ran home, sank into the couch, and began to sob. Big, ugly sobs that made my throat hurt. It was like all the work I had put into building a new life for myself had suddenly been undone, and I was just a helpless child again, wondering why mommy wouldn't play with me. I felt strong arms wrap around me and stroke my hair, even though there was nobody behind me. Normally, I would have panicked, but today wasn't normal. I leaned into the touch. After all, if this invisible being had decided to comfort me of all people, it had to mean something. Right? You are our child. You will forget about them. You will come with us. The voice whispering in my ear was so soothing that I instantly relaxed. What? She birthed you, yet has not been a mother. Come with us. You will be happy. Who are you? We are your true family. Will you come with us? I didn't even have to think about what I said next. I will. I know many of you will judge me for this response, and I honestly don't blame you. 
but I needed a family more than ever, and it seemed like they were the only family I could ever have, whoever they were. It started getting hard to keep my eyes open. I started feeling drowsy, like I had no energy left in me. Go to sleep. We'll explain everything. They didn't have to tell me twice. I fell fast asleep before I even realized it. I woke up in a room without any doors or windows, just white walls. It made me anxious, like the walls would close in on me any second. There was nobody else there, but I felt like there was thousands of eyes on me. Eyes that were waiting, their patience about to run out, expecting something of me. Will you honor the deal? The booming voice rang through the room. What deal? Images began to flash through my mind. First, the image of a woman who was sick and tired of being shunned for her infertility. A woman desperate to have a child. So desperate that she made a deal with demons. A deal that made her and her descendants carry the demon's children. My great grandmother. Then, the image of another woman driven mad by the fact that she was a child of a demon. A woman who clung to religion, hoping to cleanse herself of her dark heritage. A woman who still had to carry the demon's child. A woman who broke the cycle five years later by having her own child and heavily neglecting the demon's child. A woman who was punished for this. My mother. Will you? The feeling of being watched was growing more and more intense. Gnawing at my stomach. Whoever was watching me, they wanted me to respond. They wanted me to carry the demon's child. And I could feel their patience wearing thinner and thinner. No, said a confident voice. I looked around the room, trying to see whose it was. It was mine. You cannot refuse. But I am. I was startled at the sudden confidence I seemed to be exhibiting. I was sure that I would pay for it later. But I didn't care. I wasn't going to become my mother. Alright. I woke up back on my couch. That was it. I was expecting hellfire, excruciating pain, torture, really, anything but waking up safe and sound. Maybe it was just a dream, just something my broken, traumatized mind made up in order to explain all the abuse. Then I screamed and crumbled to the ground in pain, the worst pain I have ever felt. Like fire was spreading through my insides, tearing every inch of me apart. It got worse with every move I made. It's them. I know it's them. I don't know what else they'll do to persuade me, and frankly, I fear it. But I think I can endure it. No, I will endure it. Because the deal ends now. Shout out to my super fans, Sweet Black Swan, Casey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I really look forward to making more content for everyone.